so welcome uh, let's quickly understand these four subtopics so we'll go this 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 and this in this order first we have to understand that for a nucleus its size is related to mass right so uh, it's like greater the size of the greater the mass of the nucleus greater is its size for uh, uh, like for for other bodies the bodies that we know this is not always the case right uh, you can also have a very heavy size iron uh, very heavy iron ball with a very small size and you can have a very big thermocol box with a very large size but but uh, it's light in weight right so weight and size do not have a rela direct relation as far as other bodies are concerned but for a nucleus its size depends only on its mass so it's given by this relation basically where r uh, is equal to r naught into a power 1 by 3 where r is the radius of the nucleus a is the mass of the nucleus uh, or basically you could say the mass number of the nucleus so uh, r naught is nothing but 1.2 into 10 power minus 15 meters this r naught that you see here is a constant and it has got this value in fact uh, using this relation i can also prove that density of every nucleus is constant whether it's a nucleus of hydrogen or whether it's a nucleus of oxygen or whether it's a nucleus of any other atom uh, it has a constant density how can we how can we prove that uh, let's calculate the volume of the nucleus uh, so to calculate the volume of the nucleus you'll use this formula 4 by 3 pi uh, r cube because you can assume nucleus to be a spherical body and r cube is nothing but r naught power 3 into a power 3 by 3 which is 1 and then as you know uh, this is the mass of the nucleus right mass of the nucleus in fact it's mass number times this a is mass number times 1.6 into 10 power minus 27 kgs because you have to write you have to convert this in kgs uh, and then put in here if you want r in meters you have to put in all si units so uh, for it's 4 by 3 into r naught into uh, uh, this is the mass number of the nucleus and uh, what i can say is density of nucleus density of nucleus is nothing but mass by volume right so uh, mass here is a and volume is nothing but o oh, 1 by v so a by v is what you'll get and that's always in this case 3 by 4 pi r naught cube right this is the density of the nucleus as you know r naught is a constant here 4 by 4 3 and pi all the three are constant so that that means density of every nucleus is constant let it be a density let it be a nucleus of hydrogen or let it be a nucleus of oxygen anything in fact uh, 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 there's something that you have to understand this a is the mass of the nucleus uh, uh, in fact you don't put in here uh, uh, what do you say a, a in terms of kgs because uh, i told it uh, it's actually wrong because uh, r naught has got units of meters and this also should have units of meters right so if you put here a, a kg you what you'll get is uh, uh, what do you say meter kg whole power 1 by 3 the units will not match so if it's meters here already this also has to be in meters right so uh, let's keep that in mind um, next we'll move on to mass energy and nuclear binding energy so mass energy is a very very uh, basic concept what you can understand is according to einstein mass is equivalent to energy like if i have this mass here if i have any mass it's got some energy so if i have i have got mass if my mass mass gets disintegrated my mass can be converted to some sort of an energy basically i am an energy that's that's what that's what uh, it says any 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 body which has got some mass it's got energy in the form of its mass that's what it means so how can you relate mass and energy it's by this equation i think you would already know this E is equal to mc square so if a body has mass m mass times c square is the energy of this body like that is the energy that is stored in the form of mass you could say so uh, this is what some this is something that you have to remember just multiply mass with c square you will get the energy that is associated with that mass that's what the equation is uh, next we'll move on to what binding energy is so uh, well, let's try to understand actually so uh, here you have a nucleus whose atomic number is z that means it has got z protons and whose, whose, whose mass number is a what does mass number mean mass number is number of protons plus number of neutrons so i can say number of neutrons number of neutrons which is capital n is equals to a minus z right because z means there are z protons uh, so there are z protons here and a minus z neutrons here in this nucleus so uh, i would think that the mass of this nucleus 
I would think that the mass of this nucleus is nothing but uh, what do you say mass of each proton into number of protons which is z plus mass of each neutron into number of neutrons which is a minus z right this is what I would think is the mass of nucleus but whenever it's measured like when the mass of nucleus is measured it always comes out that the actual mass of the nucleus is less than this so if this is the actual mass like the uh, this is what it should be theoretically but experimentally the observed mass for a nucleus is actually less than this quantity that you see here so why is it less uh, let's see but before that let's see what this difference is like if i take this theoretical mass here in this bracket and i subtract subtract the actual mass that's called mass of nucleus basically this is this is your actual mass here if i subtract the actual mass what is get is what i get is a difference of mass right this difference of mass is called mass defect this is called mass defect and as we know if there is some uh, according to this principle like uh, mass energy equivalence if there is some mass defect there has to be some energy defect also i could say that okay if i multiply this delta m which is my mass defect into c square i get some energy right that was associated with this delta m mass this delta m into c square is the energy which is associated with this delta m mass and this much of energy is called binding energy let's see Let, let's now actually understand the phenomena what happens is uh, protons are all positively charged and uh, neutrons as you know are neutral the thing is uh, as you as you also know that uh, protons plus neutrons are together called nucleons right so if i bring all these nucleons together in such a close what do you say in 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 as as small a space as nucleus if you bring them close there is some amount of energy that is released in fact i could say that okay this energy released is the energy that was required uh, to form the nucleus i would say so energy is released once if nucleons come together energy is released why is this energy released because this energy has to be released for the nucleus to form right for its formation this energy has to be released because after all the particles that are coming closer they are all uh, same similarly charged they will face some repulsion so i have to do work to bring them together i have to do work to form this nucleus and and uh, as a result of which when the nucleus is formed some energy is released this energy that is released in the formation of nucleus is called your binding energy right and how much is the energy released like what is the value of this energy that is what is mass defect into c square right the energy that is associated with this missing mass is the energy that is released to form the nucleus it's called binding energy so i hope you have understood the concept of binding energy here and let's now move on to a similar term which is binding energy per nucleon remember uh, there's no difference between these two as such uh, only a slight a slight difference uh, first of all this has got a symbol of eb which means binding energy and this has got symbol in a symbol of B ebn which which means binding energy per nucleon right what it mean its formula is very simple delta m into c square this you already know is your binding energy if you divide this binding energy by number of nucleons if you divide this binding energy by number of nucleons you will actually come a, uh, you will actually get how much of how much of this binding energy is associated with every nucleon right if you divide anything uh, if if, uh, if this is like unitary method right again once again if you if you divide uh, if you want velocity you divide distance by time you will get in one second how much dis distance it traveled that's what your velocity is similarly here if you divide the number of nucleons you'll get with one nucleon how much of binding energy is associated that is called binding energy per nucleon so just divide binding energy by the number of nucleons number of nucleons is nothing but number of protons plus number of neutrons in fact you could say it's nothing but your mass number of the nucleus right it's capital a so uh, this is what your number of nucleons is now a uh, very very important point this is a measure of stability a very very important point this is a measure of stability this not binding energy but binding energy per nucleon is the measure of stability 
So, what you have to understand is, uh, let me write it here, if a nucleus has high binding energy per nucleon, it is stable. If it has low binding energy per nucleon, it is less stable. Right. Just remember this one point, everything will be clear that okay, uh, if binding energy per nucleon is very, very high, that kind of that nucleus is very stable. If binding energy per nucleon is low, that nucleus is not very stable, right. So, in fact, every nuclear reaction that happens, happens because of this, right. If, if there are, in fact, we will read later what radioactivity is. So, radioactivity is a result of decaying of unstable nuclei. Why is a nuclei un nucleus unstable for, for the, in the first place? Because it has got a very high in binding energy per nucleon. Uh, sorry, it has got a very low binding energy per nucleon. So, it tries to convert, in, convert itself into another nucleus which has a high binding energy per nucleon. So, it has, first of all, your starting radioactive nucleus is unstable because it has a very low binding energy per nucleon. It tries to convert itself into another nucleus which has got a very high binding energy per nucleon because this nucleus is stable than this starting nucleus. That is the result why your radioactivity is observed and that is, the, that is basically the essence of every nuclear reaction. So, that just understand it. So, uh, here, this is, this, I am taking a general nuclear reaction here, remember, it is a nuclear reaction. So, reactants are getting converted to products. Uh, first of all, what you have to understand is, if binding energy per nucleus is of products is greater than binding energy per, of, uh, uh, binding energy per nucleon of reactants, that would mean that product nuclei are more stable than reactant nuclei, right. And as you already know, if I am heading towards a product which is more stable than the reactant, the reactant is, reaction is much more favorable, right. So, this reaction occurs conveniently and energy is released, right. Energy is released. Why? Because uh, here you have some binding energy per nucleon, here also you will have, in fact, if you multiply binding energy per nucleon into number of nucleons, you will get binding energy of the total, the total binding energy of the reactants. Here also if you multiply binding energy per nucleon into number of nucleons of product, you will get the total binding energy, right. Because EBN is equal to EB by N. If you multiply uh, this with number of nucleons, you will get a total binding energy. So, what you have to re realize is, if this has a greater binding energy per nucleon than this, then uh, this, this is more stable, right. Your product is more stable than your reactants. The reaction will occur on its own. It will occur conveniently. And in this process, energy is released, right. In this process, energy is released. We will actually come across, we will actually try to understand what this, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, energy released is, we will actually calculate that as well, but then energy is released. If at all, uh, the, uh, what do you say, products binding energy per nucleon is less compared to reactants, then such a reaction will not occur conveniently, you have to supply energy for such reaction to occur. So, in that case, energy will not be released, energy will be consumed, right. So, uh, keeping all these concepts in mind, uh, we will now proceed uh, to first understanding what a nuclear force is. And then we can uh, we can proceed with the radioactive nuclear reactions and the phenomena of radioactivity. So let's.